Good morning, Patrick Roy, Condo Living. We're back again, and I never knew that we should know so much about windows and how to clean windows, but there's a lot to know. And I gotta give my wife some credit. I, I seen, she told me what she does. She uses a microcloth. She uses warm water and uh, a light soap. And actually that is one of the, probably the main things that a person would uh, want to use. Uh, you definitely don't want to use solvent. On some of these uh, windows, uh, when they did the construction, there would be a form of chemical from, I'm not sure where, that got on the window. And we live in a world today that people want things very instant. And so you could hear people say, they gotta use some stronger solutions. They gotta do something. I want them to take off this. See down here, there's some there. It almost looks like it's uh, some sort of condensation, but it's not. This is a chemical that we have on the bottom of the window. So they want to uh, use something more abrasive or, or something, or a putty knife, or they want to use sort of a, uh, something that actually will destroy and i'll get you back down here you'll notice that they often talk about the caulking this is a rubber gasket that is in here now if you're going to use chemicals that's going to destroy that uh, rubber gasket you're going to get you're going to get into some problems and you might have some foggy and problem windows and so you've got to be careful on what you uh, use there and the other thing is the Putting aluminum on your windows can cause, you see it, a lot of people have aluminum on their window, and what that will do is cause heat to build up within your window, and after a while, you're going to find out that you may even break the seal in your window, so you've got problems. Also, be careful with tinted windows, and also the bylaws may not even let you to put them in. Careful with that. The other thing is there's small holes. I showed you the pictures before on the outside of the wind on the window. And if you get strong winds, you can actually get the air that will get in through and under the blinds. You also can get air from inside the unit from our heat pack that will move the blinds as well. But don't think that there will be no air come from the outside. Actually, your building is designed to get air in to, uh, to keep your health uh, healthy. The I've called the uh, homes with poor air exchange or chemicals a sick home syndrome, should be sick building syndrome. The other thing is for the tracks that you will have uh, on some of the areas on the windows where you've got tracks that you want to keep them clean as well. And those holes, little holes that's in there that's uh, causing you all the problem because you see air movement, uh, you want to keep them clean so the air can actually get in. We got to breathe, we need some air, and we want to uh, make sure that uh, that is done. You can use also a little brush and clean the tracks where there is tracks, and, you, uh, uh, and a vacuum as well to help to keep them clean. And the other thing is you would want to do is make sure that you've got uh, the ventilation that uh, can come in as well. And Actually, I think I said once a year, actually it's recorded that it should be done, your windows should be done twice a year. And those micro cloths or extra uh, soft cloths, uh, they are really good for helping to uh, clean the windows. And we're back, I was just gonna say, when is the best time for you to uh, be cleaning your windows? You should do them about twice a year, and it's best to do them in the spring and the fall. The uh, reason being that the uh, lots of times you'll get uh, various different pollution, like in, in we get uh, fires here, so you get a lot of dust, you get a lot of pollutant and ash that comes. Also to pollen. Pollen is another thing that actually can cause uh, your windows to uh, get dirty. We also have our outside windows cleaned once a year. So we've been talking a lot of what is effective in cleaning your windows, but there's Another thing that you want to keep in mind as well is not only you want to see whether it's effective to clean your windows, but what does it do for your health? So you have a lot of cleaners and I'm not going to use no brand so I don't get in any trouble, but there's, there is cleaners that have fragrances in them, they have dyes in them, they have alcohol in them. I don't know if that's good or bad, but anyway, not, not for your window or not for your, for your health. 
And the other thing is there's some that have ammonia in them. So there's also health issues that you want to keep in mind. And many times you'll see very young kids, especially your grandkids come over and you love to have them, but they come running and put their hands on your windows or their mouths on your window. And it does uh, not uh, help matters any. You have to uh, do a lot of work to get those uh, cleaned off as well. Ammonia is another thing that you have to be also aware of. So don't just look at what is, will clean your the windows the best, but also is best for your unit and for your health as well. And you want to be very careful that you don't use real abrasive products because remember your windows should be sealed. And if you eat up the gasket or the rubber, then uh, that's not going to do good. Our windows are all got rubbers gaskets in them. We want to keep them looked after so they'll stay sealed. If you have ones that have caulking in them, we don't have that. But if you do, then you would have to uh, make sure you looked after the caulking. But don't plug any of the drain holes. Okay, I'm here out in the cold a little bit, but I'm still chipper here. <laughs> and uh, I just wanted to show you, I talked to you before about not plugging the holes for drains in the bottom, but not always are there holes. This is our sliding uh, door to the balcony. And I want to point down here uh, although the door is sliding up here, you'll notice there's this track down down here, and I'm gonna go right into the corner. See right in there? That's open. And then you come down further, that's open. And don't plug that with any kind of silicon seal or anything like that. That's supposed to be open. You'll get water from rain or whatever on the outside. If you look down here, you'll see it. It's an open track. That water has got to get out. If you trap it in there, it's going to eventually get into your home or wreck, the, wreck your base from your patio. So keep them holes open over here like that. Right over there. Keep them open so that the water can get out. Best time to do it uh, during the, the week is when you have a cloudy day. Otherwise, on a sunny day, when you put the water and the soap on to clean it, it's going to dry very fast and uh, get streaky. So that's uh, one thing. The other thing is some of these windows, they have tracks, others have hinges. And when you have two objects uh, rubbing together, we know it's friction, there's gonna have to be some lubrication. You have to be very careful if you put lubricant or, or, or a very light lubricant or a silica here, then it doesn't go and cause more uh, damage to your window uh, running down. So it would be very, very uh, careful with that. Where you have hinges, like here, I'll just move that back and forth, and you see that moving. And so you have a hinge, you have friction there. Where you have these friction spots, then you'd want to use silica or some sort of a, a very light lubricant on it. Okay, there's one other thing I would like to add as far as uh, doing windows. Sometimes we think everything comes out of a store, and a lot does, but uh, we can do a lot ourselves. And it's found that um, an equal part of vinegar and water together uh, can be used for the windows and is a very, very good cleaner. So don't uh, forget about those things and uh, you got them right in your, in your kitchen. So uh, that will work well as well. And the microcloth is also another thing that you can use that is also very good for your window. So um, I think this time I do have them all covered. So we'll let you go on the windows. Well, we have uh, wood engineered hardwood in our building, so I'll talk to that, but I would suggest you follow the manufacturer's instructions because not all of them had wood engineered hardwood in them. You want to vacuum your floor very often, also use a uh, dry mop, a soft dry mop, and don't let water uh, pool on your floors. Use protective walk off mats uh, at the entrance of your door and don't use heavy furniture and drag across them and make sure they got protective mats under the legs and that they are clean as well. Exposure to direct sunlight can cause damage and discoloration and fading of the wood floors. Don't be afraid to use your blinds to protect your floor. We now will come to the end of series number 15. We won't be going to the common areas yet. We still have to do the one on humidity then we'll be doing a depreciation report and the first AGM and what you should know about them. So we'll catch you again back on the humidity one.